Hi everybody, I'm Carl and welcome back to Knack 3D Designs. The folks over at Artillery 3D sent me this, the Sidewinder X1, and asked me if I'd take a look at it and give my thoughts on it. So let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed, put together, and run it through some test prints and then we'll decide, is it broke? Or if it ain't broke, then well, we're just going to upgrade it. So I hear that putting this thing together is just a snap. I say we test that theory. Well, it's that easy. No, but seriously, here's a quick time lapse of me throwing this thing together. All right, so going over the features, we have a color touchscreen display. It is in a nice metal enclosure. We have a glass bed with a painted surface. It has a USB and SD card reader. Our wiring is run through these thin ribbon cables that are taped nicely to the extrusion that go into a breakout board here. Uh, we're also using an inductive probe for our Y, X, and Z axes. It's running a Volcano style hot end direct drive. Again, you can see the ribbon cables here for our X axis. And there's another inductive probe for our Z axis right there. Up here, we've got a really nice spool holder and a filament runout sensor. The only bad thing about that spool holder is you do have to adjust it for every different size spool. Everything's built on nice 2020 and or 2040, 2060 extrusion. We have a dual Z set up here, feeding into these lead screws that are linked at the top with a belt. You can see here it comes on across and goes right over the other side. So when one Z motor moves, it moves together so you don't have to worry about one side sagging or being out of sync with the other. Another nice feature is we have a color LED display on the hot end lets you switch between all these different colors, white, red, green, blue, I've even seen it do purple and a few other colors but those are the ones that will let you set through the screen. Here's a couple of the test prints I did right off the bat. There's Artillery's sample file, a Julia vase, and a Benchy. And then here's all the stuff I printed. There's over 400 hours worth on here. There's some protopasta, uh, some Ninja Flex. It will print flexible materials. There's some engine there on that weed uh, blower handle. A couple Mandalorians and some vases and some other knick-knack parts that I printed. Those vase modes were done at like 300% extrusion, so they're like 0.8 wide. Also printed this nice fantasy castle. So overall, I put it through its paces and it seemed to do pretty well. Now let's cover a few of the things that didn't go so well. First thing I printed big was this 390 millimeter tall Mandalorian. As you can see here, it started off halfway decent but as we got higher and higher, we started getting some of these layer lines. And you'll see them real evident here on the back of the cape as we come toward the top. You can see them there. The higher we got, the worse they seemed to get. Not sure if it was shifting or over extruding. It looked to me like the whole bed was just rocking back and forth. You know, too much weight for the light spring tension that's un under that glass bed. Um, so when I got done doing this, I wanted to make sure we didn't have Z-wobble through, you know, bent lead screws or something along those lines. 
But as you can see here, yeah, it's not an overall bad model, but there'd be a lot of sanding for post prep. It just wasn't as good as I had hoped. Now that is 390 millimeters tall, 750 grams of filament, just about a whole spool right there. And that one took 78 hours to print. I did it with no supports because it was supposed to be a support free model. Uh, the cape didn't like it too much, but it did print it all. Now to test if I had any Z wobble from the lead screws, I went ahead and printed this huge vase. Again, that was printed at 60 millimeters a second, I believe. And I pumped it up to, I think this one I did at like 200% extrusion rate. It measures out about 0.7 thick. You know, a little bit of noise from the steppers, but I really don't see any layer shifts or Z wobble in this. I think it came out pretty good. So what I did to fix the problem was I put these washers underneath the screws. There's basically three millimeters worth of nylon on all four of the springs there. I realized afterwards I probably could have just used the uh, T-nut that comes with it and a shorter screw and I could have moved that down three millimeters and accomplished the same thing. So once I got done doing that, here's my second attempt at printing the Mandalorian. Same file, only difference is I did put supports underneath the cape. The rest of it was all done support free. You can still see a little bit of layer lines there. It's still 0.2 resolution, but overall you don't see all the crazy Z wobble and layer shifts and all those fat lines that we had before. Just tightening up the bed seemed to make a huge difference in the print quality. I think there's still some work to be done on it, but overall I'm much happier with this end result than I was with the first time I printed the model. Much cleaner lines. Overall, I'd say it turned out pretty good. I, I still wanna make a few tweaks, as I said, and we'll see what we can uh, get in a final product, maybe print this up in some polyalchemy on a later video. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. You can really see the difference in the capes with all the layer lines. You see it really bad in the chest pad and then on the top of the helmet there as well. Here's a nice side view of it. Again, the layer lines start to come really prominent about there at the hand and up from there. You see it there at the bottom of the cape. And it just keeps getting worse the further we go up the model. And then I decided to print a fantasy castle. Overall, it turned out well. Looks like I do need to dial in my retraction a little bit more. I had some under extrusion in a few spots where there was a lot of retraction. Uh, I think somewhere in there I had one tree for whatever reason failed the joke was they you know they just chopped down the tree because i needed one inside the castle but overall i think the model turned out pretty well that model took let's see that castle took 110 hours and again about 750 grams of filament give or take and there you can see some of the under extrusion there on, on the points of the the castle spires there a couple spots where they failed but overall I think it turned out pretty good first time I've ever printed this model I'm sure if I had time to play with the slicer settings a little bit more I could probably get it looking a little bit better
can see where two pillars had failed back there. And then I decided to play around with Idea Maker's texture feature. So I added a cloth texture to this vase and printed it at 300% extrusion rate. So it turned out to be a very solid vase. You'd be hard pressed to flex it at all for the most part. Texture printed out really nice. It did severely slow down the amount of time it would take to print the vase. It pretty much doubled it. It would have only took about four hours to print normal vase mode. All right, so we've gone over everything I printed here and some of the issues I had. I just wanted to give you some final thoughts on the printer before I let you go. First off, this has got to be the quietest printer I have. If you're one of those people whose bedroom doubles as your makerspace, this might be the printer for you. I've had this thing finish printing and not know it because the printers around it were drowning it out. At 60 millimeters a second, I really don't ever hear it running except for some of those high 120 millimeter moves. Otherwise, you, you don't really notice it. The color touchscreen display, I like how it works. It seems to function just fine. The menu option, could, the menu screens could be improved a little bit, but overall works good. I'm not a real fan of glass beds. However, this one did work great. TPU, NGen, PLA all adhered to it really well once it was dialed in. In fact, some of these bigger prints need a little bit of encouragement to let go, if anything. The inductive sensors work great for homing X, Y, and Z, though I would have rather had an ABL sensor with live Z adjustment as opposed to the Z sensor being mounted to the rail. It'd been better if it was up here on the carriage. The ribbon cable and the overall design of the printer seems to work really good. I like how the ribbon cables work. They're clean, they're neat. Some people have issues with them after time. I think it's mostly because they're just relying on the friction of the socket to hold the ribbon cable in place. I think some um, support for those and some clamps will probably fix some of that problem. The dual Z works really well, keeps everything leveled, especially with the connecting belt at the top here. Filament sensor worked great for me. And the spool holder being adjustable is great, though the problem is the adjustment is here on the back. I think if they move that around to the front with some thumb screws, it'd be great. Or you can print these rollers like I did here. Overall, I think the printer is a good quality printer, a good bang for your buck. And uh, I hope this helps give you an informed decision whether you want to go out and buy one or not. Stay tuned. I've got some time lapses after the video here of all these things that I printed. Thanks again for tuning in to NAC3D Designs and have a wonderful day.